Today, I'm talking with Michael Wainwright, president of Michael Wainwright USA, whose products we carry on the marketplace at Corvin.com. Welcome, Michael. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you for uh, for agreeing to uh, to talk to me and for visiting <laughs> me here in the Berkshires and, and my studio and my little showroom here. Very cool. You know, I was like, really excited. I, I love your products. The aesthetic is like very uh, up my alley. Um, so I'm excited to have the products in the marketplace. Um, what is your favorite thing about designing and making these pieces? They're all so interesting. Well, thanks. Thanks. So first of all, I've been working in clay since I was seven years old. I really got into it when I was a junior and senior in high school. I have a BFA emphasis in clay sculpture. I have a master's degree. I ran the studio at the, at the, one of the, the schools that I went to. And the reason why I bring that up is I come from the studio pottery world. When you graduate with a degree in clay sculpture, what do you do? Mm -hmm. I threw stuff during the week in New York City, and I sold it in street fairs and flea markets around the city on the weekends. And, and the, the point of that is, you know, I have that passion. I come from the studio pottery world. And so what I like to do now that I'm not making everything myself, I do still make quite a few of the collections, but I don't make everything myself. But everything I make, I like to have that handmade feel, that, that vibe go into what the pieces are. Yeah. So um, th that's the main thing that I like to do. And how lucky am I? I get to make things for a living. You know, so I get cool. my hands dirty in clay almost every single day. So I, I just, you know, I, those are the things that I love. Sounds like a dream. I actually did some pottery in high school. <laughs> I think I managed to like create a position as like a teacher's assistant so that I could do it like again, you know, and yeah, just yeah. keep throwing pots. Something it's, <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of the most soothing things. Throw, right. My pot, mom, right? indeed, my mom still has the little ducky and the horsey I made from uh, when I was really little. <laughs> I, I am actually on, I live on Cape Cod. So when I saw your Turo <laughs> collection, I was very excited. So what was your, what was your um, inspiration behind that? Oh yeah. So um, as you know, since you're from Cape Cod, Turo is a beach town at the end of Cape Cod. You have Provincetown, which your audience probably knows. Mm -hmm. uh, Turo is the next town over. And then Truro's of course, Wellfleet. Right, like there. <laughs> So when my kids were little, we would drop the kids off with grandparents and my wife and I would vacation down at the, uh, at, at the end in, in Truro. So the inspiration, behind, can I flip the camera? Do you care if I show oh, no, some please. pieces? Yeah, show okay. them off. All right. So first of all, welcome to my studio. This wow, is the showroom. Cool. Very cool. And this is my working studio and I'll go into this in a little bit. Mm-hmm and my wheel and a little kiln. And nice. I'll try not to get people too sick from moving the camera too quickly. <laughs> so this is uh, the Truro collection. Beautiful. So you can see that the inspiration is mm. from walking in the sand. All of these are little footprints. That's cool. And whether, Very cool. Yeah, whether it's in the Truro white or the Truro gold mm -hmm. or the Truro with a platinum rim, it's all the same inspiration, all Very the same cool. collection. <laughs> awesome. It could be interpreted as like the dunes too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, right. Kind of those. It, the, especially the when you get to the bowls. Yep. Right. Very cool. Um, those are beautiful. Um, Thank you. The, one of the designs that caught my eye was the Borealis. Um, mm -hmm. how, do, how do you create that? If, to those that aren't familiar with it, it kind of looks like flowers are embedded in, in gold. It's very unique. Um, so how do you, how do you do that? I know some of the cheese boards and um, trays have that pattern. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to tell people that I have a, a, a paintbrush and a very steady hand and I hand paint each one of these crystalline, <laughs> but actually that's not true. Okay. Um, I believe Borealis, it. <laughs> Borealis is, is a glaze, right? So okay. a regular glaze, what you do is you glaze your piece, you put it in the kiln, you get the temperature. In this case, it's around 2,300 degrees. Um, and then you shut your kiln off and the next day you have your finished pieces. With a Borealis, since it's a crystalline glaze, the crystals grow in the cooling process of the kiln. So oh, cool. again, you glaze your piece, you put it in the kiln, you get to temperature, 2,300 degrees, instead of shutting it off, you slowly cool it and I hold it at um, three different temperatures. The hotter temperature, the crystals grow and they become more star-like. 
And in the cooler temperatures, the crystals grow in a more round pattern. Mm. But um, typical crystalline glazes, you have a few crystals on a piece and that's about it. My crystals are, uh, my, my crystalline glazes, my Borealis pieces have a tremendous amount of crystals going in it. Yeah. Just because I hold cool. it for such a long period of time. Very cool. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I have to ask, um, is there a story behind the face platters and, and bowls? Yeah, so the, the face collection is something that I did immediately out of graduate school. These are some of the, the first pieces that I sold in street fairs and flea markets around the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, a dear friend whom I was working for said, you know, Henry Bendel has this deal. You should really try to go meet with them. Henry Bendel was a Fifth mm -hmm. Avenue store. And they used to have this gig where the first Friday of every month, a buyer would meet with anybody. So I stood in line for two hours, met with the buyer. He looked at these pieces. He looked at me and he said, this is why we do this. And it was the first real store that I sold to. Oh, wow. um, they did really well with the collection. They sold yes. out of it two weeks before Christmas. They expanded me when they expanded into many stores. And then unfortunately they had some financial issues and my department ended up disappearing. Mm -hmm. And I did nothing with these pieces for a very, very long time until the pandemic hit. And then on my own platform, I wanted to try something different, you know, something that no one else had. And I introduced these pieces again. And again, they started selling like hotcakes. So uh, I, I'm now opening them up to other platforms such as yours. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I understand you wanted to demo. Did you want a demo? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know so if that's I can actually... too hard. Yeah. No, 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 I, I could do it. So these, these are thrown. And so yeah. I'm going to show you the process of how I actually throw these and how I put the faces on if I can figure out how to get the camera <laughs> set up properly over here. This is my wheel. And cool. I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw a, a really small one right now, a, a small face bowl. This is my clay. All right. The reason why this is called throwing is because of this action right here. That's why it's called throwing. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. okay. Yep. Yep. So throwing is really interesting. There, it's kind of a, a, a three-part system here. The first is centering, where you're trying to get the clay completely symmetrical. Um, and you do this by having your hands move the clay instead of the clay moving your hand. Mm -hmm. The second is opening up the clay and basically making a cylinder. Mm -hmm. And then the third is shaping it to the shape that you want. And that's the those are the three processes. So um you, you can't have friction because friction, if you have friction on your hand, it throws the clay off center. So right. that's why you see, you'll see me constantly putting my hands in water. Right. Yeah, it's funny, it brings back memories. <laughs> you can go tall, you can go short. And basically what you want is for the clay to be completely symmetrical mm -hmm. on the wheel head. And you have to do it in a specific amount of time, because the more water you add, the wetter it gets. And then mm -hmm. that causes a whole other thing of trouble. So that's pretty centered. The next thing I do is with my thumb, I'm going to stick it at the top mm -hmm. and basically open it up. Okay. Yep. So then I'm going straight down and then over. Mm -hmm. I wish you could see inside the clay so you can see what I'm doing. You got um, to gotta leave a base. But sometimes it's easy to have a too thick of a base, right? That's what I remember, right? Yeah, yeah. So people think that when you're throwing a bowl, you're making this shape, but you're not. What you're actually doing is making a rectangular bottom. Hmm. Otherwise, you'll have too much clay on the bottom. Right, right, right. And then basically, you just, you're using your fingers as an aperture, and you just kind of throw the clay. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you just kind of pull it all the way up. And you want nice, even wall thicknesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's stage two. Mm -hmm. That's making the cylinder and then shaping. This is called a rib. I'm just going to put that in just to make a little bit more of a bowl shape. And then the last thing I do is I clean up the bottom. So, and that's pretty much it. Cool. So that's how I throw the bowl that makes 
the face bowls. Mm -hmm. So this is a bowl that I threw earlier. So this one's a little bit dry. Mm -hmm. This is a negative of the face that I use for my entire face collection. It's made oh, okay. out of plaster mm -hmm. and plaster is absorbent. So you can put it against a wet surface and it won't stick. If, I, if this were made out of plastic, for example, and you put it against a wet surface, you probably wouldn't be able to get it off again. It wouldn't okay. release. So very simply, I, I press this against the surface of the clay. Mm -hmm. And on the inside, I press with my finger. So it takes the entire shape. I take a little ball of clay, hmm. put it on the inside, just because that nose is kind of hmm. um, it's kind of deep. Squish it all around. And then cool. you have a face. Wow. Is that a, a is that modeled after any anyone in particular? No, actually, I have a box full of faces. Oh, um, it's all different faces. Oh, okay. Well, the one that I use for this collection is just this one. Oh, but okay. I have a box over there that I took from different architectural, wherever I can find them. Um, oh, I cool. spent some time in Italy. A lot of them came from there. And and this one I like just because it's very simple. In fact, I even took a mold of my own face when I was in my 20s <laughs> and uh, and shrunk it down. So I used to do uh, uh -oh. I used to do these bowls with my own face. And then I thought, yeah, that's probably not a good thing to do. <laughs> Depends so, and then the, yeah. the last thing I do with these is I just kind of scallop the top wherever there's a face just to give it a little a little dimension. So these are little small ones that I'm probably going to start doing. This isn't part of the collection yet, but they probably will be shortly. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing yeah. that. What do you yeah, do for what do you do for glaze and all that with, with these bowls? So this is this is completely wet clay. What you have to do is then it goes over here to these drying racks and they have to dry completely right. when it's completely dry like this this is some, this is clay that has been dried but hasn't been fired yet if i were mm -hmm. to pour water back on this it would turn back into mush it would turn back into clay right. this piece has been fired this is a really small kiln i have other larger kilns that are off, off premises from here mm -hmm. um, as you can see all this stuff i fire upright just for air circulation at least so mm -hmm. they don't break but once the piece has been fired, the chemical water has come out of the clay. You could add water to it. It will never turn back to mush, but this clay is not fired up to temperature. So it's still very porous, which means you can pour glaze onto this thing and it'll act like a sponge. Oh, so okay. cool. the first firing is called your bis firing. That's basically where you get the sponges. Then you glaze it, which is a liquid. This is a piece that has been glazed with that Borealis glaze, mm. but has not been fired. You can see it's really chalky. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This, believe it or not, turns into this crystalline glaze. It's the just same from, piece. Just from being in the kiln? Just being in the kiln oh, and then wow. firing it, yeah. That's so this, wild. Yep. And then the metal, which you can see on the edges of these, mm -hmm. is a real 24 karat gold and platinum that's a, a an additional firing. It goes oh, wow. up to around it goes up to around fourteen hundred degrees. Oh my gosh! Wow. So, yep. Uh -oh. oh, see there there's some of the little face bowls that I made prior. These are dry but not fired yet. Oh wow! Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, so what are your, what, what which of your products do you use the most in your in your daily life? So I use a couple of things. We use my Turo dinnerware. Okay. Um, you know, the salad plates all the time, the dinner plates all the time, and these dinner bowls, which, again, we use these uh, just as much as we use dinner plates. Oh, they, yeah. Um, I love they're, that. They're, I love that shape. That's the kind of bowl we use all the time, too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, they're, they're great. as you know, they're great for pastas, for yep. rice dishes. They're really, really functional. Mm -hmm. uh, in the day, they used to be called rim soups. I never used these for soups ever, but we use these all the time for the, the things that I just said. Yep. And oftentimes, if we're throwing a party, I'll still use the white, depending on what we're doing. But then I'll dress it up with um, some gold or some platinum when people are coming over. And then the wine stems that I drink out of, we have both Truro. This is the, the Truro collection in right. glass. Beautiful. And also my new Panthera with no metal on it. This is what we are now drinking wine out of. Yes. Yeah, so and the beauty. What is, what's the, is that, so it's textured, that glass? What is, what's going yeah. on there? 
Yeah, so this is, it's got an etched surface on it. And okay. I have to say, uh, Zoom doesn't do it justice. No. Um, when when there's red wine in this, this crackle really pops this, That's cool. this surface. So yeah, and this collection also comes with color. Um, it comes with smoke, with platinum, and it comes in indigo with gold. Yeah, uh, they're truly unique. I, I love that. Um, I love that pattern. It almost is like snakeskin. I don't know if you like to describe it like that, but. You, you know, I, I haven't described it that way, but I like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like reptilian. Yeah. It looks like reptilian or, or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, Panthera, is that, that's just your signature name for it? Or is that like an, a technical well, name? Well, Panthera, like panther, like right. a leopard. Yeah. I mean, it started, yep. it's, it started with, with this collection here. Right. Yeah. The darker color. Right. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing yeah. those too. Yeah. It started with these and I still do these and these still do really well. Um, and then it went into this dinnerware pattern. Blue, that blue is really pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're also available in, in the white. And then Panthera, because my Panthera gift items did really well, Mm -hmm. uh, I really wanted to come out with glassware to match it. My Truro glass does really well. As I said, uh, you know, I'm a ceramics guy. Mm -hmm. the, my best, my best selling items right now, the, the top 10, five of them are my glass drinkware. <laughs> hey. And the other five, and the other five are the pieces that I make here in the studio that we already discussed, the Borealis collection and the face bowls. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. um, I think your products seem like ideal gifts. Um, I could definitely see buying at least one or two things for my mom for Mother's Day. Um, <laughs> which, which are your favorite items for gift giving? Boy, I, I you know, I, I get excited about the things that I'm making now. So like the Borealis that we, um, yeah. that we discussed earlier, you pair a Borealis cheese board with the the cheese. churro cheese set yep and it makes a dynamite gift uh, i love, the, I love that cheese plane that's a great uh, like that's a great cheese plane i think you call it a shaver or whatever you want to call it yeah 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 no it's um i like it too and um it's also sharp so it actually does shave your cheese because <laughs> for me since since my name is on everything I'd like everything to be functional. My vases can actually hold a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> My cheese plane actually can shave cheese. <laughs> um, and of course, everything that comes gift box as well. I have to say that my number one gift item uh, for the holiday season, we sold so many of my, my martini glasses. So oh, many wow. of these. Well, they're, yeah, so, they did really, they're well. really unique looking, you know, and, and like the height is different and they're very signature. Yeah, yeah, they, they come as a set of two. And I think uh, these days, regardless of your political background, people mm -hmm. are doing a lot of drinking. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, and, and most, mostly in pairs and no, mostly in pairs, right? Or largely. Exactly, exactly. But I think people also bought these, not just for martinis, but for um, shrimp cocktail, for desserts. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're more versatile than just oh, you for know what? martinis. This, this glass is perfect for um, ceviche. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's guy. great. But somebody yeah. introduced that to us. I remember making it among one of the fish, one of, among the many fish dinners we have. He was like, oh, I'm going to put the ceviche in a, in a martini glass. And I was like, oh, man, I'm never going back. Because it just is like a fun way to eat something. I don't know. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it when people send in pictures of how they've used my product mm -hmm. too, you know, especially when they do it in ways that I hadn't thought of. Like I would never think of ceviche, but I love the idea of it. I'd love to see it at some point. Cause it's like, cause you're not, cause you're going to eat, uh, you're not going to eat like a, a whole like bowl of ceviche, right? Like the, the other bowls you have. Right. But it's like a perfect portion size of it. Right. Right. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about wine. Our company mission at Carvin is to change the way the world experiences wine. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us about a favorite wine experience that you've had? Sure, I can tell you the story. Um, I don't know, well, I'll just tell the story. So 
uh, again, I, I, I'm married. I met my wife, um, 27 years ago mm-hmm. and on a blind date. Oh, and so the, nice. thanks. And the people who set us up said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the Guggenheim. The motorcycle exhibition is going on. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll end up in Prospect Park and we'll listen to Burning Spear, who was playing. <laughs> Burning Spear is a reggae band. I'm familiar. Was playing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, we, we, we actually did go to the Guggenheim and we actually did end up in Prospect Park listening to Burning Spear. But because I had the heads up, when we got to Prospect Park, I pulled out a picnic blanket, a very nice bottle of wine, and some wine stems that I had personally made. Wow. And, that's yeah, an impressive my, first date. Yeah. My wife said that was, that's what got her. <laughs> good so way. That's, good. that's my, <laughs> that's my wine story. Good on you. That's a good way to reel her in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That sounds like what actually sounds like one of the coolest first dates ever. And regardless if you end up marrying the person, but that's even cooler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Thanks. So, Anything on the horizon, any exciting product developments that you'd like to tease or talk about? Yeah, I I actually do. I mean, this, as you said, they're teasers. These aren't out now, but Mm -hmm. they will be hopefully by fourth quarter. Um, This collection is brand new. Nice. And it's, um, yeah, it's it's only four different units. It's um, this cake plate, the bowl, the salt and pepper set. Oh, cool. And I have other things on here, but it is a, uh, a, a cheese board. Like a, like a, I'm sorry, a, a, a chip and dip. Again, these are my own little um, observations. It looks like cracked earth. Oh, <laughs> I, I love that. I love that, yeah. Like yeah. this, it could be like the surface of Mars or some Mars or something. <laughs> well, that would be appropriate right now. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then maybe more with, uh, with it's not competition with you guys, I promise. But, no, but again, a, <laughs> but I do have a, a, a bottle, a, a, a hand bottle opener and, uh, uh, and uh, corkscrew. Awesome. And then I have a whole, I have a whole bar set that's going to be coming out, ice bucket. These are not right. So I feel funny even showing these, the pattern. This is first round of samples. The second awesome. round of samples I've already redesigned it but it does come with the ice scoop nice and a strainer cool. ice buckets yeah yeah so this is new and then the last thing that's new that will be coming out soon is this is new dinnerware and new gift items which i'm really oh, happy cool. with and these are samples that i made myself and i'm debating whether i'm going to do this in my studio or have one of my manufacturers make it for me i haven't decided yet it's really cool it's like a live edge or something it's like yeah it looks like um yeah. like uh, uh like a, a seam like a sewing seam or something yeah almost like a zipper right 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 that's really cool mm-hmm. awesome. but i like that you said i like that you said live edge because the way that i tend to show my product are on live edge tables. <laughs> there you go so it, it kind of makes sense and i am from the berkshires <laughs> and so i look out the window of course and Oh. There is the live edge. There There's you go. The inspiration behind it. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's not a bad view to have from your studio. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for teasing us with the, the future products and uh, the, the barware. Everything would, will, will be great on the marketplace. So um, I look forward to adding those when, when you're ready. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. And um, doing a, a, a live demo. That's a first for these interviews. <laughs> and uh, we look forward and everybody should check out the Michael Wainwright products on our uh, marketplace at Corvin.com. So thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm excited to be selling with you. Awesome. Take care.